Do you want a farm that is going to give you XP on demand, even in peaceful mode, without a mob in sight? And you can decide how much XP you actually want and when you want it. Don't go anywhere. I'm showing you my XP bank. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamance in my farm tutorial series. Today, we're making an XP bank. This is a self-servicing, you don't have to do anything, XP farm without a single mob. I made an XP farm with no mobs a little while ago, and people complain because it didn't give that much XP, and that's because I use cobblestone. Cobblestone is not a great source of XP, but if you only want a little bit, it works very, very well. This version can give you far, far more. You can bank as much XP as you like. You don't have to grind. You can do it in peaceful. It is very, very easy to make, and I'm gonna do it for you right now. What you need for this build is about five stacks of glass, about two stacks of stripped wood, I like oak, about half a stack of dirt, 16 rails, three powered rails, two chests, four hoppers, one furnace, one redstone torch, five levers, three water buckets, two glowstone, but that's optional. 26 redstone dust, 12 pistons, not sticky pistons, 12 bits of bamboo, about a stack of wooden slabs, 28 pieces of sand, up to 15 observers, depending on how many you want to use, one minecart with hopper, 24 glass panes, and four stacks of stone bricks. There is a world download link in the description below if you wanna come and have a play. This is the template you require for the first part of the build. That long orange strip is 14 across, and on the fifth one from the left, you've got a little nibble coming up. You've also got two blocks on the left-hand side and a one single purple block right on the bottom left corner. That is where we're gonna put ourselves a chest. But before we do that, we wanna get rid of that block and pop in any structural block you like there and pop your chest on. That's fantastic, then get yourself two dirt blocks. I'm using dirt because it's very cheap. Pop them on the red, and then strip out all of this yellow completely, and pop a powered rail on there. Then place normal rails all the way along, right up to this little exit part here. Pop a lever there, and a powered rail next to it, and then continue with your row of rails that come up to the first dirt block, and then, Hopperize the back of your chest. Shift click and push it into the back of your chest. You can see that the tail of the hopper is pointing into the chest. If it doesn't point into the chest, it ain't gonna work. Shift click again, place the furnace that you've got on top of the hopper. That will allow the hopper to suck stuff out of the furnace. Then get another hopper and shift click into the back of the furnace. And then in a final hopper and shift click into the side of that first hopper, so you can see the tail runs from f uh, hopper there into that, hopper there into the furnace. Then grab some more rails, and you wanna get, using shift click, a rail on top of that first one, a rail on top of that second one, get a structural block again, shift click to pop onto the side of the hopper, and then you want another diagonal block right there. Grab a lever, turn it on by popping it underneath, and a powered rail on that. That powered rail should then be powered. This powered rail will be powered when you turn the lever on and grab a lever, place it there, turn that on too. That will allow a hopper with minecart to go from one end all the way to the other without stopping. And that's what you want it to do. Then it will run forever backwards and forwards. Come to this far end of the trench here and count 12 with a dirt block. Dirt's nice and cheap. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. Don't go further than that. Otherwise, what happens when you have this minecart popping along, it won't fit under the hole. It'll get stuck. So you want to have that just as 12. And 12 is actually the perfect number. Then get a block of choice, whatever you'd like it to be. I'm going to use stone brick simply because it gives a bit of a a certain type of feel in the way that things look. So I'm gonna use stone brick, it's gonna cover over that lever, so that's unsightly, and you're gonna have two rows of stone bricks either side of a dirt block. Then, grab yourself some stripped oak wood. Now it doesn't have to be stripped oak, but I just like the look of stripped oak, and pop it along the back of the 12 there, and then get some pistons, and facing you, place a piston on each and every one of those stripped logs like that. Then come around the back and into the back of the pistons. You could use strip logs again, might as well. 
as soon as you've got them in your hand, but you could use dirt or anything else cheap, cobble, it works absolutely fine. And then on top of this, let's put another six stripped wood. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So you've got a tower there, and then complete that on all the pistons. Once you've got your wall of wood, come along to the top and facing from the back, put an observer. The observer is an amazing redstone block. Put the observer so its face is facing out towards you from the front. This is the front and its little redstone bum is facing out towards the back. Now you have a choice here. You don't have to put an observer on every one. If you want to save your resources, you could actually just pick one and have an observer on one of these stations. However, you may find it works a little less efficiently. Maybe you want to have every other one or something like that. That would work absolutely fine too. It's completely down to you how many observers you want to use. I'm going to fill in all 12 because actually it's just a couple of bits and pieces to make these observers. And then you want to face looking right up the wall like this on the block below that observer's bum there. Put an observer facing downwards. So the little redstone bum is facing downwards. Miss a block and face another one. Miss a block and place another one. Sometimes a bit tricky. Perfect. Okay, so you can see redstone bums all facing downwards. Then get another structural block. I'm going to use just for consistency some more stripped oak and pop them along here like that. And get some redstone and pop redstone dust on each and every one of those. Now what that will mean is if any of these observers fire, all of them will fire because that redstone will link up. Then put a redstone dot on the face of that observer, one on the face of that observer, and one on the face of that. And then a row of redstone dust all the way along the bottom here. Now what will happen is when the observer, well, observes something, that will let out a little redstone fart. And that little redstone fart is gonna run along the string no matter which one it is, and this observer will see this redstone light up. And he's gonna let out a fart because it scares him. And that's gonna light up that redstone, which is gonna scare this one, another fart. Lights that redstone, scares him, and that fart will fire this entire row of redstone. And what that means is, things people can see up here affects these pistons. So for example, I'll just demonstrate, pick a random one, I don't know, this one. If I put a block in front of this face, those pistons are gonna fire. There you go, take it away they fire again. So any update in front of those faces is what causes the system to work. I have given a bit of an edge to this now. I've put two wide stone bricks right across up each side, across the top and down. So it effectively gives a wall on the sides of the building. If you wish to, you could put out the back as well, but there's no real need to cover up the back unless it's unsightly in the world. Then come around to this side and place a lever just above the level of this observer face. When you turn that on, that will fire that redstone. And because that redstone is on, that means that this face won't see any updates. And therefore, it won't allow a signal to go through, even if these little faces here see something going on. And this is the on off switch for your system. Turn it back on again, and it's ready to roll. Now, I already mentioned that you can use this farm in peaceful mode, in which case you may not be bothered about this next step, but if you place a bit of glowstone, four from each end like this, that is gonna light the entire place up completely. Grab yourself a piece of glass and go too high, and then run glass all the way along, leaving a channel open at the bottom. Remove that bit of glass, and then fill the glass right the way to the top so it is level with these top bricks. I'll be back when I've done that. We have placed some wooden bottom slabs just as a bit of a roof. They're bottom slabs, so again, if you're not in peaceful, they won't spawn any monsters or beasties or mob on top of it, which is obviously good news. Then in the gap that you've made or left here with the glass, pop a bamboo shoot on each and every one of these dirt blocks. And then you can get your glass and fill in because you're not going to need to access that again. That is already growing, you can see. I've got my tick speed at 20, which is the normal tick speed, and I'll even show you by doing a command. So, game rule, random tick speed, 
20, which is standard default. So my tick speed is at 20, so these plants are growing at the random default speed. What that's gonna now do is grow a load, a load of bamboo. And when the bamboo hits the face of the observer, and it won't all do it at the same time, but when the longest one hits the face of the observer, these pistons will all fire. And when they fire, they will break the bamboo at the point or just above where the shoots are now. So they will stay there and they'll be able to grow again. But all the parts of bamboo will fall to the ground. They will be collected by this Minkawi hopper. And as it goes over these hoppers, it will shoot it into the back of this furnace and that will be sufficient fuel to keep this furnace running. Move the lever that was under there to here and then pop it on. Otherwise what will happen is you'll lock this hopper I don't know why I put it there, probably because I'm a Wally. Generally speaking, you will find this will be at around about half capacity. That's around about 100 potential pieces of bamboo. It will be at around about 50 every time these pistons fire, because you can see they grow at slightly different rates. That means that with every firing, and each firing will probably be at around about every two minutes, because it will take about two minutes for one of these bamboos to get as high. So you'll get 50 bamboo every couple of minutes running into this furnace, and that is plenty to keep it rolling. So now you have got a choice. What is it you want to smelt? And the decision of what you want to smelt could have a number of different factors. Maybe you only want to have just a very few XP levels in your bank. Maybe you want to have loads, but you want to do it manually. You don't want something automatic. If you want it manual, just stick a hopper going into the top and a chest. Fill the chest up. That is going to roll straight through into this bottom chest and you're going to be absolutely happy with gaining whatever XP you get. I've done a video on the different levels of XP you get from different smeltable blocks. What I'm going to do is use cactus, because cactus will give you 32 levels from zero of XP, which is enough for full enchanting. First off, get yourself a hopper and poke it into the side of that chest. You can see that you've got the towel going in there. And then we're going to build a wall up. Shift click and put one side and then shift click and pop it on the other side. Then create a channel that is eight long, including this hopper. So hopper being one, that's two. Shift click that on, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then come up one, and this one wants to be seven, including this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you've got a bit of a zigzag that goes like that. Make these slightly higher. Bring this around, and then here, get yourself a step upside down like that. That will allow you to continue to open up your chest and just hide up that step there by putting that block there as well. Build up this wall so as it is too high around both sides of this channel, even the higher end. Once that's too high, get a bucket of water and put the water right at the very, very end. That will run all the way down, down the gap and straight over that hopper. And then out the back, along this side from the one in, count seven more blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That gives a row of eight, and then you want to come one more and up. Fill in that entire floor and case it in so as it is at least one high all the way around. So you should have a platform there that is eight by 15. And then come down with a temporary block and come in one in from the corner, so there, and then leave a gap there, leave a gap there, leave a gap there, and do exactly the same, making almost like a checkerboard pattern across the entirety of this surface. When you've done that, get a nice looking block, because this is not a temporary block. I'm gonna use strip wood and pop it on top of the temporary block. And then at the end of that, get yourself a sand block and pop a sand block on top of the nice block, whatever it is you've used. I'll be back when I have done that. Now make sure you remove all of these temporary blocks and then grab yourself two buckets of water is ideal because then you can put a bucket of water there and a bucket of water there, which will make a water source block in three different spots. And then every other one, pop the bucket of water and you can refill it from the one in the middle and you will have water going all the way along, running right to the edge, but not running over, because if it runs over, it makes a right old mess. Then grab yourself some glass. I prefer glass because then you, again, you can see what's going on inside. And you wanna be making this glass, not one, not two, 
but three high on the sides, which means that it's four high along the front. Once that wall is up, put a cactus on each and every one of these sand blocks, and then we are ready to start harvesting them. And the way we're gonna do that is by using the mechanism of cactus that it doesn't like growing next to any block. So get yourself a temporary block, and on the second, fourth, and sixth rows, pop a temporary block on top of the cactus. You can build on top of a cactus, you just can't build next to a cactus. And then grab a glass pane, and on each side of these temporary blocks, put a glass pane like this, and then get rid of the temporary block. That will leave that little pillar of glass between all of the, the rows above the current level of the cactus. And it will look very, very much like that. And once those cactus start to grow, it will just pop off. The cactus will literally reject that section of itself because it doesn't like growing next to anything. That will then push the cactus into the water, which will push it into this water channel here, which will push it into this system and that furnace will start to smell. And there you go, that furnace has turned itself on as a result of the first piece of cactus popping off the top and running down in the water. There goes another one. And that will continue to smell forever because this cactus will continue to fill up. You can see one more cactus going there until it is completely full. That will then fill up this chest. You can see we've already got green dye starting to come through the chest. And that will accumulate XP within that furnace. That furnace will run for as long as you need it to. And when you're ready to take that XP, I'll show you what to do. So you need to be able to take this XP whenever you want. And that is actually relatively simple. What you need to do is come this side of the furnace and knock out two blocks. I'm actually gonna replace that unsightly red wall from the beginning. Put a redstone torch underneath that hopper on the side of that block. That is then gonna lock that hopper whilst it is on then take out the block the other side and put a lever. And that lever will give you the ability to reverse the polarity on that redstone torch. So if I switch the lever, the redstone torch goes on and the hopper is no longer locked. Don't put the lever there. If you put the lever there and turn it on, you're gonna lock the hopper with the lever and not the redstone torch and that's not what you want. And you can demonstrate that by this stuff smelting away, nothing in the hopper, it's all going through to the chest. If I lock that, when that finishes, like that, it's locked. And that hopper won't allow anything to pass into it. You can then physically remove the item from the furnace, and that's the only way that you can get the XP. You have to remove the item from the furnace, and we'll do that in just a moment. So it's been running for a little while now, and I've been doobie doing over there, pretending to make a house, and I fiddle around over there, did a load of mine. Obviously, didn't actually. It's a big flat world, but in a real world, that's what you'd have been done. You'd have been doing other stuff. This will be running in the background, going and going and going. You don't have to do anything to it. And in here, we've got a full double chest full of green dye, loads and loads and loads. And in here, you can see it is still rolling. So what we're going to do is we're going to come around the back here, and we're going to lock that hopper. You can see the hopper's locked with that redstone torch. And we're going to come along and we're going to see now, next time, that is going to stay there. And I can then remove that and see what XP I get. I have got exactly zero XP here. I come along, take it out, boom. 42 levels of XP as a result of a double chest full of green dye. If that was a single chest, it would be 32. But because the demand of XP points goes up, as the levels go up, it's not double like 64. So 42 levels of XP, that is lots of enchantment that you can get cracking on there with just do be doing around your world while this is running in the background. It's actually a really simple farm to set up. Maybe you want multiples of these. You could have one with a single chest, one with a double chest, one with two double chests. And the number of chests and bits and pieces that you put on it increases or decreases the level of XP you'll get when you empty that single piece of dye into your inventory from the furnace. If you have enjoyed that video, please remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it and I will keep on making them. And also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.